if it hadn't been for this. It's a phrase we perhaps use quite a lot. We can use it in a negative way. If it hadn't been for the pandemic, I would have been going to London last year to watch Les Mis. If it hadn't been for the rain last weekend, I would have gone for a long walk. If it hadn't been for Covid, my loved one might still have been alive. But we can also use it in a positive way. If it hadn't been for the intervention of someone higher up, my application for help might not have been successful. If it hadn't been for my neighbour who did my shopping for me during the lockdown, I would have struggled. If it hadn't been for the hospital staff who looked after me, I might not have lived to be here today. It's a simple phrase and we can use it either to place blame or to acknowledge gratitude. If it hadn't been for this. This is where our psalm begins today. If it hadn't been for this. If it hadn't been for the fact that God was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then we would have been destroyed. There's almost a sense of amazement about this. The phrase is repeated to let it sink in, to acknowledge the wonder of this. If it hadn't been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. The psalmist expresses both the astonishment and the gratitude of Israel for this wonderful thing. The psalmist understands that if Israel is relying on itself and its own strength, then, it's, then it is hopeless. Israel is so often exposed and vulnerable and just can't save itself. But the psalmist also understands that Israel is not on its own and so isn't hopeless or helpless. The enemies and adversaries might seem stronger and Israel often seems to be in danger from an unequal opposition. But this is never the end of the story. Things never work out as they should if we were to calculate in purely human terms. Weaker side faces stronger side and surely the stronger side wins. Surely the force of a stronger opposition is irresistible. The psalmist describes quite graphically what should have happened. Israel should have been swallowed up or swept away as though destroyed by a great flood. But the psalmist then makes a claim that alters our rational analysis of the situation. He breaks into a song or prayer of praise and blessing and affirmation of God. In the church, we might call this a doxology. He says, blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. He affirms that God has saved them. God has delivered them. When I first read through this psalm, my mind mixed up the letters in the word fowlers and I read it as flowers. I pondered on this snare of flowers for a little while, thinking it was an unusual image, but that it emphasised God's strength in the face of opposition. I thought that a bird caught in a snare of flowers might be released by a helpful passerby quite easily. So I thought that in the face of God's help and deliverance, these enemy forces might actually seem as fragile, as easily broken as a flower. Then I read it again and realised it was fowlers and not flowers. But the result of my pondering remains the same. The reality is that it's not just us and them. It's not just us and the people or things that want to harm us. There is a third force here. And that force is God. God alters the balance. God subverts the conventional realities. God makes things possible that are otherwise impossible. Israel knows that God is acting on their behalf. God reshapes the destiny and the prospects of the people who know that they are utterly dependent on God. This psalm seems to be a response to a specific situation, but we don't know now what this is, and so for us, and perhaps even for Israel, it's become a more general example. It might be that on that one occasion, Israel was saved from certain destruction. But now we can read it and say, what happened on that occasion always happens to us because of God. There are many other times when we seem to face overwhelming forces, and on our own we might feel hopeless and helpless, but God is with us and we will not be overcome. Here in this psalm, we're invited to think about the negative. We're allowed to consider the worst case scenario. We're encouraged to think about the most dreadful possibility. The psalmist makes the negative option sound as threatening as possible. What if? What's the worst that could happen? 
But we're not left there pondering terrible things. The conclusion of the psalm is a reassuring and confident faith that God is with us. We're not swallowed up or swept away. We can express our deep trust and relief in gratitude and praise. We can gather in community. We can acknowledge the situation we have faced and still face to a certain extent. We can be thankful for one another and we can offer our love and praise, our gratitude to God. We can affirm and express our trust that God is the Lord of all things and that God is very concretely our hope and our help. The very life power of the whole universe is actually here for us and loves us. Today we face uncertain times. We're trying to adapt to all that has happened in the last 18 months. We're trying to regain some sense of normality, but we sense that it is very fragile. And perhaps we ourselves feel very fragile. Sometimes we look at the forces we feel we're up against and we're overwhelmed and a bit scared and we might think, there's no way we're getting out of this one. Surely we're going to be swallowed up or swept away. To feel those things, to contemplate those things is okay. It's human nature and we get it in the psalm too. But there is a third force in play. God is with us. God loves us. God holds us. And with God, what seems impossible becomes possible. With God, there is help. And with God, there is hope. What does the future hold? None of us really knows. It might not look like we think it will. It probably won't look like what we've had in the past. It's likely not to be as familiar as we would like it to be. We are people who have been changed by the last 18 months. Our context and situations have changed. The world around us has changed. Our priorities and capabilities have changed. We are still caught up in uncertain and challenging times and we don't know when we will emerge from them. All around us, people are struggling and perhaps we're struggling too. But God is with us and God is our hope. God does not give up on us, but always seeks to do a new thing in us and with us. God undertakes a work of transformation in us and in all that we face so that impossibilities become possibilities and despair can be illuminated by hope. And more than ever, at this time and in this place, hope is what we need. So may the Spirit help us to keep our eyes on God and to trust in God's unfailing love. May we be open to the transformative possibilities that exist in God's love and power and grace. And may we be able to join with the psalmist, whatever we face, in saying, Blessed be the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Amen. <laughs>